One of my favorite activities is exploring old abandoned buildings. I've seen quite a few strange things during these trips, but one experience still creeps me out to this day. A few years ago, I found a long forgotten water refinery through the help of online exploration communities and Google Earth. Although it's stupid, I always go to places for the first time alone, partly for the thrill and partly because if something bad were to happen, I would feel terrible having brought someone else into that situation. So, I make plans to head there the next day after my classes let out. The day of the trip, I pack up my camera and water bottle and set off following my hand-drawn map, the downside of not having a printer. After an hour or two of biking, I finally arrive at the place, which luckily had an old bike path dead-ending just past it. It was completely overtaken by vegetation with trees growing up through and around the buildings, not to mention that the actual buildings were just disintegrating, with paint peeling off every wall and ceiling. I took my time, scouring each of the buildings looking around for anything interesting. I found hundreds of broken windows, weird broken spheres, and some kind of giant oven. After an hour or two of successful exploring, I decided to head off happy with an SD card full of pictures. Soon after I pulled my bike back out through the hole in the fence I entered and started biking away, I remembered there was one last shot I wanted to get. I'm pretty insistent on getting the shots I want, and I didn't know if I would ever come back, so I decided to just tough it out, ride back and take the picture. As I was going back, I saw a lone man dressed in old clothes walking down the bike trail away from the dead end. I thought it was kind of a strange path for someone to take a walk on, and something in me said, don't let him see you go in there. I biked past him and gave him a slight head nod and figured I'd bike all the way to the end of the trail, turn around, and by the time I got back, he'd be long gone, having continued in the opposite direction. I leisurely take my time to get to the end and turn around, and as I head back toward the hole in the fence, I see him there, staring at me, and walking back toward the dead end from which he came. He had a happy look on his face, but it wasn't the kind of happiness that made me feel at ease in any way. The best way I could describe it is he looked like he had just been told a very dirty joke and was trying to contain it. I knew I had to do something as I was literally trapped between him and a dead end. I decided to play it cool once more, but be ready to drop everything and run if things got hairy. As I get closer and closer to him, I can see his facial expression clearer, and it's not someone I want to be in the same state with, let alone the same bike path. I'm silently cursing myself for going back for one picture as I slowly get closer. Finally, I'm about 20 feet away from him and he calls out, I sure would like a ride, it's so hot out. Mind if I jump on? As soon as I hear this, I realize this is no longer my brain falsely interpreting something as creepy. I pick up speed and rush past him putting as much space between us as I can. I now look behind me and see that he's once again turned around and following me. At this point I bolt sprinting down the bike path back onto the road. Interestingly, I stop at a nearby gas station on the way home to get a refill on my Gatorade. I see a cop there and told him I just rode down the old bike path by this park. He looked at me, sort of bewildered as to why a person would ride out there, or at least that was what I guessed from behind his sunglasses. And he told me he didn't recommend people going there, especially alone, as some shady characters like to hang out there. I live in a rural area in the north of the UK. About 20 minutes outside of the village I live in is a large complex of abandoned buildings. I haven't ever been able to get a straight answer on what these used to be. Some say an old farm, others say it was an RAF, UK Air Force base. Either way, it is a cool place to explore and any kid's dream. I'm older now but I practically grew up here, spending many summers at this place with my group of mates. We're all older now so we don't go anymore. I mention how many times I've been to demonstrate how comfortable I am with this place. Any creepy feelings usually associated with abandoned buildings have worn off because of how many times I've been here. I should also mention that in all my time visiting this place with my friends, we have never seen anyone else there. It was kind of like our place. Tonight I was chilling with a mate at my house. We are both going to separate universities in a few weeks so we were feeling quite reflective and started talking about our childhoods and in particular our many trips to these abandoned buildings. Eventually, although it was late, curiosity got the better of us and we decided to hop in his car and drive the short journey to this place. When we got there, it was pitch black and we had absolutely no gear except the torches on our phones. He had even come straight from work, so was in his formal suit. We arrived at the place and began walking around, looking in all the buildings and recounting stories of all the summers we had spent here. 
We were talking carelessly and loudly. In hindsight, this was probably a mistake. We were quite deep in the complex when it started, and loud tapping, the sound of metal on metal. It startled us and we both jumped. In an effort to calm ourselves down, we told each other it was probably the wind. It didn't take us long to work out that this couldn't be the case. The tapping had a rhythm to it, but it was one that would keep on changing. A few times it would even have a recognizable tune such as, Queen, We Will Rock You. At this point, me and my mate were terrified. We started to slowly, as quietly as possible, go back the way we had come and towards where his car was parked. We had only made it a few meters when I accidentally stepped on a bit of MDF board lying on the floor. It snapped with what felt like the loudest sound in the world. At that point, the tapping abruptly stopped and everything went silent. We started to creep away again. We had only made it a bit further when something I will never forget, but wish I could happened. We heard a voice. It sounded mad. It was loud and clear enough to hear, and it was speaking English. But what it was saying didn't make sense. Just a random jumble of words and phrases blurted out without any pause. At this point, we both broke. We sprinted towards the way out, suppressing the urge to scream like kids. As we were running to the entrance, we ran past another building. As we ran past quite loudly this time, we heard another voice. It was a man's voice again, but definitely different from the first one. This was saying a similar assortment of nothing, but we didn't stop to listen. We sprinted full tilt too, we got to his car, hurled ourselves in and screeched off. We got back to mine and practically hugged each other for the rest of the night. It might not sound that creepy now, but something about those voices coming from the abandoned buildings put fear in the animal part of my brain. This happened a few years ago, so excuse me if the details are a little blurry. I was close friends with this one girl, I'm going to call her A. It was July, and we were hanging out. She told me about this really creepy house down the road from her place. At this point, we had been exploring abandoned houses most of the summer, and she had never told me about this one before. I asked A about the house, and she shifted uncomfortably in her chair. She told me how a few months ago she and her other friend went into the house. Nothing seemed weird or out of place. But she told me as they stood in what was left of the living room, they heard a deep growl come from all around them. Not just behind them or above them, but the sound surrounded them. They sprinted out and went home, not really ever talking about it. Me being dumb, it piqued my interest. We had been to a handful of houses before, and nothing really ever happened. So I convinced A to take me to this house. She kinda laughed a little. She agreed to take me as long as we got baked beforehand. Sure, okay. I'm not 100% sure that's going to help, but okay. So she packed a bowl, did her thing, and we were off. It was a 15-minute walk from her place, and you couldn't really see the house from the street. It was surrounded by trees and high grass. We found a little path to the house. It was only maybe 20 feet from the street. We walked around the property. There wasn't a bird to be seen or heard. There was just absolutely no wildlife around this house. We walked around and found a jar of nails, a jar of pee and rusty nails, an altar of some sort with two chairs in front of it. There was a little shed-like thing ten feet from the house with a copper wire leading to the attic of the house. We found two mounds of dirt that had grass growing on top of them, kind of looked like graves. Altogether it's pretty weird and I'm uncomfortable, this place feels weird and we haven't even gone inside this little cottage yet. We finally made our way to the front door and went in. The place was half burnt up, huge holes in the ceiling. To your left was shelving, and to your right was the living room. It had two couches, burnt up and little. A TV, a table, and through the living room was the kitchen. The kitchen was burnt to a crisp, no way to get into the kitchen to look around. Same with the back hallway leading to the bedrooms. A walked through the living room. I sort of followed her, not really entering. This place was giving me the creeps. There were gas jugs littered all over the place, and the place just felt heavy and unwelcoming. As I was looking around, A was leaning on the couch looking at a wallet. Suddenly I heard footsteps above us. Like I said before, there were holes in the ceiling that lead to the attic. There's also no possible way to get to the attic from inside the house. Freaked out, I looked at A to see if she heard it too. She looked at me and suddenly the footsteps were coming from all around us, above us, beside us, in front of us. We freaked and ran through the front door and ran back home. After we calmed down, we asked each other if we heard the footsteps. We were 100% positive we were alone in that house. For weeks after, I would see a dark mass in my room and out of the corner of my eye. 
I was having a string of bad luck. The last time I saw the mass-like being, I got into a car accident and when I looked in my rearview mirror I saw this black mass in my back seat. I have no idea if it was connected to the house we went into or what. But I am never going back into that house again.